Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're taking a look at how to create this step-by-step -step kind of infographic, okay? It's a path that weaves its way around three pillars. Each pillar represents a step. Um, each pillar gets taller just because I think that looks better and it can be different colors and things if you want. By this point in the series, you should be pretty well versed with how this works, but I thought I'd take you through it anyway because there's some quite cool techniques in here. Um, so let's take a look at recreating this. Um, first thing you're gonna need to do is make sure you have your path. Now I built this in Illustrator purely because I find it's a little bit easier to get these curved paths by just making circles, joining them together and cropping out the sections you don't need. Otherwise in After Effects it's difficult to get them sort of perfect. Um, so I made these shapes in Illustrator, we're gonna bring them into After Effects. Of course, if you want to, you can just build them directly in After Effects from the start. So we'll create a new composition. Make sure it's 19, 20, 10, 80, five seconds will do. And 30 frames per second is fine. And we'll just call this steps. There we go. Um, so in that uh, composition, we will need a, a new solid. Oops, that was composition. Lay a new solid, red background is fine, okay? And in there, I'm just gonna drop my um, shapes illustrator layer on top of it. Just gonna lock that background as well. Now, we want to work with these shapes individually. So within my After Effects, um, within my Illustrator file, sorry, I've created each shape on a different layer so that when we right click and convert to layered comp, inside that composition, there is a layer per object. Okay, we'll just cut those, go back to our steps composition and paste them. We can then delete the shapes composition because we don't need it anymore. Each individual layer, nice and simple, right click them and choose create shapes and vector layer and then you can remove the original and this is basically um, as if you'd now created the shape within after effects from straight away uh, it's just i find it's a bit easier sometimes to work within illustrator because the tools for creating shapes are a bit smoother there so we have our path layer we have the third and second circles and we have our first circle there too Okay, that's great. Now we're gonna start animating all of this in 2D and then simply extrude it to 3D when we need to, just to save on rendering times and stuff like that. So we want to add a trim path to this one first of all. Let's drop that down, hit add, go to trim paths, and then we can start and finish that however we like. Now I will say before I get too much deeper that this is part of a series, uh, the intro to uh, motion graphics or infographics in motion series, sorry. Um, so if you haven't checked out the others, it's probably best to start with one of them. This is the fourth episode in the series. So I'm gonna go th uh, through things here that I'm not gonna cover from scratch. I'm just sort of gonna work through them. Um, so I recommend checking out the 3D pie chart video first. And then from there, you can sort of go to anyone that you want. Okay, so we have our trim path. I'm just gonna bring that end state down to zero. I'm gonna create sort of maybe two seconds in. I'm gonna bring that keyframe back up to 100%, okay? Then I'm gonna right click these, go to keyframe assistant and add an easy ease to them. And what that does is makes it start a little bit slowly and finish a little bit slowly. But it's probably not gonna be the exact curvature I want. So I'm gonna to go to my graph editor, select both of those and drag that along so that it goes from very fast and slows down. So when you watch that again, you can see it sort of um, drifts out, which is quite nice. Um, next, all we need to do is create the scale animations on each of these uh, plinths, however you want to look at them. But um, we probably want to create the text on top of these first as well, because you can see in this one here, we have the letter numbers one, two, and three after each plinth. Uh, best to make all of your assets in 2D, first of all. So we will do that. Number one, and I'll just uh, duplicate those. That'll be number two, and I'll duplicate that. And that'll be number three, okay? Number two, number three. Oops, escape, I forgot. Um, cancels any edits that you do to text, so make sure that you click out of them, otherwise it won't be saved. And then selecting all three of these, I'm just gonna recenter their anchor points to the bottom middle, okay? Then I'm gonna take each of these here and just drag them roughly over the center 
of each circle. Like so. Doesn't matter if they're not terribly accurate because the camera's gonna be moving anyway. Okay, perfect. We now need to make all of these layers 3D so that we can extrude them. Nice and simple to do that. Select all of your layers and just choose 3D. Okay, um, let's finish animating these before we extrude them though, just for simplicity shape, uh, simplicity's sake. So we'll select all three of our pillars or plinths. We'll press S to bring up our scale keyframes and we'll um, maybe, maybe one second for each of those to grow to its full height, okay? Uh, to its, sorry, to its full width. Um, leave it at 100% on the second keyframe, drop down to 0% on that first keyframe. Again, I'm moving quite quickly here because this is part of a series. So if you're struggling to keep up, I do recommend you go and check out the first video in this series, um, which should be in the recommendations to the sidebar. So easy ease those, grab those keyframes and just click and drag those along. Okay. Then they should just grow quite simply like that. Now you can see already it's uh, having a bit of trouble rendering that because I'm also recording and stuff at the same time as well. So drop that resolution down temporarily to a quarter and you'll see how things start to grow. Okay, so at the moment they all come in at the same time. Um, that's not great. And also these numbers don't scale up either. So we'll just do the same thing. We'll take those scale keyframes, push it along to one second, drop back, close them all off to zero. And then we'll just ease those as well, just for the sake of it. Perfect. So now everything we have is animated, but it's all coming in at the same time. Um, that's easy to fix. What we want to do is each of these plinths to appear as the point in time that the path uh, reaches it. So we'll find maybe when that path reaches the center of this first circle, and then we'll take layers one and the number one and with both of them selected we'll just press the open square parentheses button and that'll push the start of those layers to where our timeline uh, cursor is okay and then do the same thing move along wait until it's roughly in the middle of the second one and do that with layer two and number two and then the same thing for the third one about there perfect now, if we watch this back, they start to come in in a bit more relevant time. Okay, don't worry about the speckling on these letters. That's just because they're in 3D space, but they're all at the same um, level at the moment because we haven't changed that. So let's fix that now. First thing you're gonna need to do is make sure that each of these has an extrusion depth. Um, we went through that in the previous uh, tutorials, but I'll just take you through it again. All you need to do is drop down your layer and you'll get an option called geometry and you just take your extrusion depth and you push it up to whatever you want. In this case, let's try 50. Um, we can then take that and apply it to every other shape on our canvas, okay? Probably gonna find that that text is a bit deep at 50. So what we might do is take all of those Get our geometry options, maybe push that extrusion depth down to 25. Okay. And we'll just copy that value across to all of them. 25. Make sure that one's been done as well. 25, perfect. Okay. So we'll just collapse all of those. So it's a bit easier to work with. And now, if we add in a camera, we can see what that's actually done. Okay, so we'll just go to somewhere later in the timeline, add in a camera, like so, and then press C to bring up the unified camera tool, tab through that until you get to rotate, and then just holding shift and dragging up, you can see now that our shapes have a 3D depth, which is perfect. A bit difficult to tell at the moment because there's no shading. So what do we do? We add shading to it. Again, we went through this in the previous tutorials, but I'll just do it quite quickly here. To our path, we'd like the side colors to be different to the top color to help differentiate it. So all you need to do is go down, make sure you're on your path layer, not on the layer itself, but on the shape of itself. Click add, click side, 
click color and that will add a color to the side of that shape. It's very important you have to be selected on the actual shape itself, okay? Um, then all you need to do, I'm just gonna pick up my color palette on the other screen here. Take your side color and create it something that looks a little bit nicer, okay? Now we'll do the same thing for the rest of these shapes. We'll do it to number one, number two, and number three. Now we could go through, click through all of them, um, take that color, uh, take the material option and then and uh, add the side but what we'll do is we'll just copy that from this one and paste it on all the others here and we should see ah actually that hasn't worked for that exact reason that i said you have to paste it on our path here okay now would that be group one or group two Group two is the one that I just accidentally pasted to, so we'll just undo that, there we go. So you have to go down to your path here and paste it there, and that creates that shading shape. Probably don't want it to be yellow though, because that looks a little bit weird. So what we'll do is we'll grab sort of a darkish gray and we'll shade it that instead. Now what we can do is copy this side color, tab down the geometry, uh, sorry, tab down the contents for each one and paste it on those paths like so. Oops, can't paste custom data. Why not? Um, okay, no problem. We'll just add it manually. Click add, um, click side, click color. And we'll paste that in. Do the same for this shape here. Contents, group, path, add, side, color, and paste. Perfect. Okay. Right. The last thing then is to add a side color and to these uh, three letters here and to rotate them so they're standing up because currently they're sitting flat uh, on top of these um, sort of plinths here. Okay. Um, so we'll just collapse all these down. So again, we've got a bit of easier room to work with. Like so. We'll take our first text layer. We'll bring up the rotation tool. In fact, we'll do that for all of them. We've got plenty of room to work with. Okay, and we will start to rotate these on their X axis, like so, probably all the way up to 90, so they're standing perfectly upright. And we'll do that for all of them. There we go. Cool, the last thing we need to do to these then, I'll just bump up the quality a bit so it's easy to see, is we need to adjust the color of their sides. Nice and simple, we've been through this before. Drop down onto your layer, select your text, um, select side, select color, select RGB. Now this one we want a nice dark blue, like so. And if you zoom in, you can see that the sides of that shape are darker. Really easy to do, so let's just do that now on the rest of these two. Select your text, select side, select color, paste the color code you want. Select your text. Select side, select color, paste that color that you want. Nice and simple, okie dokie. Um, so all our preparation work is pretty much done now. Um, we've got our animation, um, we've got the things scaling up. The last thing we want is some of these pillars or plinths to be higher than the rest, and that's easy to do. Um, essentially, we want to increase their extrusion depth and then just push them up in Z space so that they look like they're sitting on the same level, which is fine. So we will once again collapse all of these. So we've got a bit of room to work with. And we will take our second pillar and we're gonna edit two things. We're gonna edit the position with P and we're gonna push this up by, let's say, 50 pixels. Now that makes it 50 pixels uh, higher in the air, but doesn't actually make it 50 pixels taller. To do that, we need to bring up the extrusion depth and bring that up to 100. Now you'll notice that made it 50 pixels taller and 50 pixels higher up. We also now need to just adjust the position of this um, letter two. So we'll push that up by 50 pixels as well. Um, so that is still sitting flush with the top of that shape. That's pretty much all there is to it. All we need to do is with 50 pixels more, do that on the third shape and the third letter as well. So on the third shape, we'll push it up by say 100 pixels and we'll push the extrusion depth up by 100 pixels to 150 and we'll push the shape 
of uh, the position, sorry, of the third letter or number up by 100 pixels. Perfect. And now you can see that we've got our animated shape. So let's just pre-render that and see what we've come up with. Collapse all our layers, give ourselves a bit of room. And we'll render it in half because that's good enough to see. So our shape sort of moves in. The other shapes grow around it. Hopefully we'll get there. I'm making my computer work quite hard by recording this and rendering it at the same time. Let's have a look. There you go. So shapes grow in and they grow up as well. If we wanted to, we could add the um, animation of the shapes sort of growing, um, sort of sliding upwards as they came in. That's quite easy to do. Um, all you'd have to do is go to the position of each of these shapes here and keyframe them as they came in. So we could keyframe here, ending keyframe and go back to that first one and just push it up in Z space a bit, say a hundred pixels. And then we can ease that out. In fact, let's do that to all of them. Let's put a position keyframe on the second one. So this one is 50 pixels because that's a hundred difference between 50 and negative 50. We'll ease those as well. And we'll push the speed over. And we'll do the same thing for the last one. Um, position keyframe, move along. Push that one to zero, there we go. That'll make them look like they're sort of growing and pushing themselves through the world. Like so, let's have a look at that. There you go, so you can see the sort of shapes grow a little bit from the bottom, which is exactly what we're after. So let's look at that in real time, and if we're happy with it, we'll add a camera movement and we'll call it a day there. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'd say I'm pretty happy with that. The camera movement is really what's gonna make it look um, its best. So let's find a finishing point, maybe three seconds in and choose how we want this to finish. Of course, we're gonna need our position keyframe with P and we're gonna need our point of interest keyframe with A. Um, gonna select both of those and choose a finishing point. So just rotating with C through the camera control tools, I'm gonna to choose how I want this to end. So maybe I'd like it here. Gonna have to pan it over just a little bit to visually center it. I'm sure it's mathematically center at the moment. Um, and then we'll have it be a bit more of a steeper angle, like so. Perfect, that's how we want it to end up. How do we want it to begin? Well, we probably would like it to be top down and we'd like it to be a bit further out. Now, if I were to create that keyframe here, it'd be a lot of guesswork because I can't see any of the shapes. So what I can do, is move one keyframe before and adjust everything here like so. So I make it roughly top down. We'll pull that back a little bit. And that looks pretty center to me visually, maybe just a touch over. So we're happy with that position. Now when we drag it all the way back here, we know that that's gonna be the same and we know it's gonna look good. So let's just add a bit of easing to that. Maybe we'll add a faster, slow transition speed as well. And let's take a look at what we come up with. Let's watch it in full as well. So we'll just save that. And we'll be back when it's finished rendering. Okay, perhaps a bit fast, but you get the uh, the general gist of it. In fact, the, the camera moves too slowly for the content there, and it does fall off screen for a second, but we can tweak that, we can fix it. You get the general idea. Um, that's pretty much it for this time around. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. This one I tried to go a little bit faster because it is slightly deeper into the series. So uh, like I said, if you had a bit of trouble following, don't worry, that's fine. Just go back a few episodes in the series and watch one of the starter ones instead, and you'll be able to follow along much, much easier. So that is it for this time around. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.